I'm Siwa Lee Rose Amador, and this is Native Voice TV. Welcome to the show. This show is being taped on Mwekma Ohlone land, and our guest today is a chairwoman of this Mwekma Ohlone tribe of San Francisco San Bay Francisco Area. San Francisco Bay Area. So welcome, Charlene. Thank you. Horshe Tuhi, that is good day in our native Chochenyo language. Um, my name is Charlene Nijme, and I'm the chairwoman for the Mowak Maloney tribe of the San Francisco Bay Area. And your tribe has been very active lately. Tell us some of the things you've been working on and a little bit about background about your tribe and being from here. Sure. Um, yeah, we're very much working heavily on the um, federal recognition of our tribe. It's been a 42 year struggle for our people to um, be acknowledged, our existence to be acknowledged by the federal government. Um, okay, you were the first people here. Yes. Why aren't you recognized? Yeah, so a little bit of background history um, mm -hmm. before we get into that is we are the people from the Bay Area. We lived in the different, there was hundreds of villages around the Bay Area before Spanish contact. So my people lived around the Bay Area in these villages. Mm -hmm. But when the Spanish came in the late 1700s, they rounded those people up and forced them into Mission Dolores which is in San Francisco, Mission Santa Clara, and Mission San Jose. Um, most, I do have to say, most of the Ohlone people did die from disease um, and forced labor. It, it was pretty intense. Um, so moving forward, we are the community that survived, you know, the, the Spanish contact, the Amer uh, Mexican American contact, mm -hmm. and the American period, especially that was a lot more um, brutal on our people and people around California, right? I mm -hmm. mean, the governor, Peter Burnett, passed policy, uh, you know, to exterminate the Indians in California because they didn't want us coming back and claiming land. But I, ha I say the land is too valuable right in the Bay Area to leave to the Indians. And, it, and it's so um, prevalent now, right? Because of our existence not being acknowledged. We were acknowledged by, by the government in the early 1920s to receive land. The Congress mandated uh, uh, the BIA to buy land for California tribes and bands. Our group was identified but the government decided not to buy us land. An Indian agent um, took it upon himself not to remove us from the list of tribes to receive land. So today- well, Just like Alcatraz. Yeah. I mean, Alcatraz should have gone to the people, but right. it didn't. Right, Even though by law it should have. Oh, look at all the treaties. Right, they ignore the treaties and they ignore the first peoples here in the mm -hmm. Bay Area. I mean, if people looked at the Bay Area, you, you, everyone should ask the question, why is there a big black hole in the Bay Area? I'm talking from San Francisco to Monterey County. There's three legitimate tribes in this area that survived the genocide. Ourselves, Mwekma Ohlone, Ama Mutsun, and Ohlone Costano and Esla Nation. We survived that genocide. There was a few of us left, but the point is we survived and we're still here today struggling to get our existence acknowledged by the federal government. That's, so what are you doing to move that forward? Um, you know, we're looking, we're, since I've been the chair for five years, I, um, my previous predecessor was my mother, Rosemary mm -hmm. Cambra, and um, she fought for the same issues, you know, um, federal recognition for our people and repatriation efforts. I'm just carrying that forward. I'm carrying her legacy forward. Mm -hmm. I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing is making sure that our people stay on this homeland, get our federal recognition and the land base to continue to stay on our 10,000 year old uh, ancestral lands. Um, so what I'm doing, I'm actively, um, you know, reaching out to different organizations in the Bay Area, church groups, trying to get their support in our effort because you know, it's really amplifying our voice really to Congress because I have to say Congress has ignored us. They've ignored me since I've been the chair for five years. And 
we're, I'm sorry, we're, we're finished being ignored. We need to take action. I'm going to Congress, um, I'm going to Washington DC every other month visiting Congress. Um, you know, they ignore me, they don't take the meetings, their staff takes the meetings. And I'm really pushing the effort for recognition, getting Congress, the representatives in our district to sponsor legislation. You know, because that's really what the BIA kind of uh, diverts us to is, Congress can help support this effort. So, but what do you do when Congress ignores you? Right, right. So where is it as far as the Congress representatives? Do you have support from any of them? Or is it the California ones or local ones? Who do you have to? I would, I say I had support. Mm -hmm. I had support from um, all four of our representatives um, when I really heavily started the effort uh, last November. You know, I spoke to Anna Issue um, and asked her, I, I, these were my words, it takes great courage to take this type of um, stance and support for Mawekma. Mm -hmm. um, and she right away said, yes, I will champion this bill. She says, what I ask you to do is go get the support from the others. And I said, I will do that. So I reached out to um, Ro Khanna, I met with him, and I met with, um, and our staff reached out to Eric, uh, Eric Swalwell and Jimmy Panetta. So we were all working together uh, to get this legislation mm -hmm. worked out and introduced, um, and they were in full support up until uh, Congresswoman Zoe Lofgren got involved, which I'm really shocked with Thank that, you. because she has been a very strong mm -hmm. supporter. I remember as a child going to um, campaign fundraisers for her with the tribe and the previous so chair. What, why is she against it, or what's going on with Well, that? Um, she finally responded to my emails uh, late December, because I think everybody was actively involved, right? All the mm -hmm. other congressmen, but, her, her position is she supports our effort for recognition, but she would like to um, take a piece of sovereignty from us. And her biggest issue, and, she, and it's a personal issue, um, is she doesn't want gaming in the Bay Area. And my, our position, not even my position, because this question was raised uh, with the previous chair 25 years ago with Fen Senator Feinstein. Mm -hmm. She didn't want gaming in the Bay Area, but like myself, um, the previous, we had to go to the people and ask them. You know, they're asking us to give a piece of our rights away. Uh -huh. They don't want gaming. Um, and my people said, no, we, we've given enough. We've given our land that was stolen from us. We've given our language that was taken and our culture. Uh -huh. We are not giving up any more of our sovereignty. This is a right that was, you know, um, given to us. And we want to exercise that if we choose to do so. Absolutely. Right now, this administration, my administration, isn't looking, the elders on the council are not looking for, towards gaming because this is a other, another battle, another struggle, and they won't be around for that struggle. So they're leaving it to the next generation if they choose to do that. Right. right. So what you're, she's ultimately asking is to take the rights away of future generations. And that's that's wrong. It, it's plainly it's wrong. Like any, but that has to do with it. I, I it, yeah, I, I totally agree with you. I totally agree with you because um, that should be the choice and the decision of the tribe, right? And not the government, right? And and I have to and I uh, stress this to Zoe um, and her staff and others is these are two different issues. Sovereignty is the first issue we should deal with. Are we a legitimate tribe? Look at that first. Mm -hmm. And if we are, you should not hold this back from economic anything. development. If from anything, economic development is a right that the people of California gave to tribes through Proposition 1A and Proposition 5. They said they can do, tribes can do gaming on their own lands if they choose to do mm -hmm. so. So by her making that statement, uh, she it, she doesn't like gaming and her constituents don't like gaming. I think I, I would have to disagree with her because I've been in the community and you know they asked me as well, what's the hang up? What's the issue here? I said, it's gaming. And everyone I spoke to said, we don't have an issue with that. That's your right. I said, exactly. I, I don't know where she would get this this notion that the constituents are against it. I mean, 
that sounds more personal. Yes, an issue um, is now on board with her sta her stances, and she did say issue did stress that it is a personal issue with her, and I acknowledge that. I, I also said I have a personal issue with gaming because it has divided our people in Indian country. Yes, I know. And if they can wipe that away, the gaming issue, like take it away from us and have uh, clear the table, right? E the e uh, even the playing field for all of us, I'm for it. Except that it has brought a lot of um, economic development oh, to so many tribes. And, right. And it really, it should be up to the tribes. I agree. And not the government to make that decision. So, Ro Khanna? He is supportive. I, I would have to say he is supportive, but he is looking to, um, the natural uh, House of Natural Resource Committee to get somebody, he will not introduce it, he will not champion, but he will co-sponsor if somebody from the Natural House Committee, I know I'm saying that name wrong, um, introduces something, he would jump on board a co-sponsor. And I can tell, I do, I can tell you that um, Ro Khanna, Eric Swalwell, and maybe Jim ben Panetta, I don't think they have an issue with gaming either because they understand that it is the rights of our nations mm -hmm. to, to do this, if we choose to do it. Really, that's, the, that's it, if we choose to exercise those rights. So are they just taking the lead of Zoe? Or? They are deferring to her as senior um, representative, as a senior legislator, and which puts us in a bad position because... Well, maybe, uh, well, you probably already are doing that as far as getting the community involved. Yes. And that's one way that the community can help, you know, by what, writing letters, calling, so forth, make, right. you know, right? Yeah, exactly that. Calling the representatives and, and letting them know they stand with us and they support whatever we choose to do as a sovereign nation. Mm -hmm. And it has nothing to do with economic development, that we are who we say we are. You know, the, the evidence is not the problem here. The, it's not in dispute. Mm -hmm. It's politics and special interest. That's okay. what's at play here. Well, I would think that the community really should come out and support this mm -hmm. in any way they can, whether it's through an organization, you said, or, or their churches. There's or, churches and, you know, yep. individually writing letters and supporting it any way they can. Right, and they are doing that. That's and they're good. really sub amplifying our voice in the community. And more needs to happen, right? We need to get louder. I really believe that's when our politicians really start paying attention, is when our voices are louder. Well, they look at the votes. Right. Right. So, exactly. That's so, what counts. Yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And that's where we have to get the word out to get the community out. Right. Community because out. if they don't, if, if she's not listening to her people, her constituents, and mind you, we are her constituents too. Our members are spread out through the, about the Bay Area and mainly in her district too. Mm -hmm. So she's not listening to the people she represents. So what do we do about that? What's the next step? So you live, if you live in Santa Clara County, what message would you give the community in Santa Clara County? I mean, they're the ones that can help, right? Right. So. I, I would say, you know, um, stand up with Mawekma. Stand up and amplify our voice in the community. Call Representative Zoe Lofgren and let her know you stand with us. And if, and, if she, and if she still doesn't listen, we need to reconsider who sits in her seat. This is Native rights, and I think people are becoming more aware of the injustices mm -hmm. that were done to Native people, and this can't continue, you know, if you support Native people. Right. So, And it's the children, help. right, and mm -hmm. it's the children making the change. They're listening, they're paying attention to everything going on. And I noticed you have dancers, and yes. I see a lot of the kids out there, and that's wonderful. Oh, it's beautiful. And they're singers? They are. They're singers. Um, our, our tell me about the language. You have language classes and so forth, because everything was taken away. Right. The language, culture, everything. Dances? Yeah, so the, our, our, um, we revitalized our, our uh, language in 2002, um, and we have five fluent speakers in our tribe. And, and most recently, we are considering um, re, uh, bringing this back 
you know, revitalizing it back in the young community because they really want to learn the language. Um, you know, we had kind of a, 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 um, a stall, I don't know what per word to use there, but um, because of funding, you know, resources that um, to support this mm -hmm. effort. But now that we have the Preservation Foundation, Mowak Maloney Preservation Foundation, um, that's where some of this funding will help support bringing the language and, you know, teaching the young people who are very eager to learn it. We're revitalizing our dances. One of our young men brought this to us last year and very passionate about bringing our dances back. And we supported that. The leadership supported his effort. And we're all involved in that, um, bringing, you know, being out in the community and showing the people that we're here and this is who we look like. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. And I think in Santa Clara County, you haven't been as visible as you have been, you know, like the last, say, 10 years or so. Right. And it's so good that the community could see we do have tribes here, this, mm -hmm. in, you know, in well, a, a tribe in Santa Clara County and the Bay Area, we have, you know, a few. And I don't think people, and people are usually surprised. Right. You, there's native people here? You know? Right. Yes, <laughs> you know, it, I don't know what they're expecting to see, you know, mm -hmm. but uh, it's like, yeah, there's a lot of native people here. Mm -hmm. And I was so happy when the school was renamed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what a beautiful thing that yes. was. Tell our audience about that. And it was the children going back to the kids that, you know, they wanted to rename the school, you know, because their school was named Peter Burnett after, a, you know, a, a governor, the first governor of California, the person who was ruling their state and actually was um, in, uh, complicit in the genocide that happened to the first peoples. And the students were asking, what happened to the Ohlone people and where are they? So this, you know, um, they reached out to us to get involved and put our name in the list of community leaders that were also a part of this uh, renaming. And at the end of it, our name was picked by the community. Yes. Um, Mwak Maloney Middle School. What, it was just a beautiful thing that yes, happened. It was. It is. <laughs> there should be more. <laughs> there really, and there will be more. Because like I said, the kids are paying attention and they want change. One of the things that always bothered me was having the kids build missions mm. in school. Mm -hmm. And it was like a requirement. I don't know what grade it was in, but, or still yeah, fourth is. fourth grade. I, I, I think it's changing now. Yeah, <laughs> good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because I just thought that was horrible. Right. Just re, I mean, for native children there, having to, to relive. To glorify it. Yes. Yep. But now I hear you're going on, oh, we only have 10 minutes, on a horse. Yes. Gonna ride a horse where? And what's, tell me all about that. So this goes back to amplifying our voice out in the community, is that our, our people are gonna be on horseback from San Francisco to Washington, D.C. And this is sharing our struggles with federal recognition, our issues with repatriation, um, um, just sharing that with the communities that we visit from California, all the way to DC and inviting our brothers and sisters who share these struggles or different struggles of the government not listening to them. Joining us on this effort to, to force our stories out in the open so the government has no choice but to listen to us. When is that gonna be? That will be um, the end of April, beginning of March and it'll be a three to four month trek wow. from San Francisco to DC. We should have a big kickoff in San Jose too before you leave. Yes. Now, are you raising funds to for this project? Yes, we are. We're starting to ask organizations, mm -hmm. church leaders, and groups to help fund a horse for each of our tribal members. Oh, wow. And how many members would that be? We're going to start with 50, 50 horses, um, and then, of course, RVs and cars for our elders to join. And that means you have to feed people all yes. along the way and find yes. housing, I guess. Yes. All along the way. Right. Wow, that's pretty exciting. Yes. And you're going to ride a horse, huh? I am. All right. I'm very excited about this. I bet. Yeah. That is a big undertaking, but it's makes a, it has a impact on people across the country, and that's what's important. Right. And we plan to camp right there in front of the White House. 
until Deb Hallin or President Biden comes out to hear our story and listen to us and not ignore us. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm hoping the community could support you in that effort too. Yes. You know, any way we can, and um, maybe you know, providing resources, etc. Yeah, maybe that would donate be great. a horse. <laughs> that know? would be great. Yeah, we'd so. be most grateful for that. So we're gonna start. So uh, who's gonna plan the route? Uh, we're working on that. You know, we gotta bring in um, professionals, mm -hmm. right, to help work out the schedule, lo the logistics, and uh, maybe bring students in to film it. You know, because we do want to create a documentary out of oh, this. Absolutely. Yeah, to continue the message. Uh huh. Well, maybe you could stay at schools and so forth mm -hmm. along the way. Right. Or That's Indian a good centers. idea. Right. Because there's a lot of health centers and so forth. Indian. Uh, well, if you go through Indian country, <laughs> yeah. you know, you can probably stay at some of their places. You know. That's. Them. Those are great ideas. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's so exciting. So in Santa Clara County. You have, you're going to have language classes mm -hmm. and dance classes for, now are there, would you say there's, are all the uh, uh, Wekma Ohlone people identified in Santa Clara County or are there some that aren't identified and are um, descendants? Uh, we do have some descendants. We do have a few descendants um, who are not enrolled in the tribe. Um, and, and really that's their choice mm -hmm. not to. Um, we've offered um, enrollment to them mm -hmm. um, and they decided, but we do have members throughout the Bay Area. They live in different counties, Alameda County, Santa Clara. Um, oh, okay. So yeah, we, um, most of the known surviving descendants and lineages are enrolled in Mawekma. And you know, some of them are in Santa Clara, uh -huh. some of them are in Alameda and okay, right. San That's Francisco. That's like Fremont area. Yeah, Fremont. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And has there been any discussion about having any kind of cultural center? Well, that's interesting that you mentioned that um, because the city of uh, an organization that is working with the city of San Jose um, are in discussions now. I don't know if I should even mention that, <laughs> but they are that's talking. To, they are discussing maybe having a cultural center. That it's time. You know, there was one um, introduced or proposed um, a few decades ago, wow. right where um, the arena is at, Sharks Arena, where the Ranger Station is. And it's kind of destroyed now, the ranger station right off the Guadalupe and uh -huh. Santa Clara Street. So I have a rendering, I actually just sent that over to them to look at. Uh -huh. So hopefully that will, you know, um, you know, come to fruition the here. Ball rolling. It oh, for seems sure. Like it's way overdue. It really is. It would be wonderful to have a cultural center here in San Jose mm -hmm. to share our stories, you know, our songs, our dance with the community. Yeah, because there's a lot of community activities. Well, at Conexion, we have a lot of them here with the Indian Health Center. But, you know, there just really isn't a, uh, you know, a native cultural center. Or right. And there should be. There should be. We're here. And, and yeah. we need to have a space that shows it. Absolutely. Right. And, you know, I'm glad that a lot of the tribes are um, becoming more visible mm -hmm. to the community mm -hmm. in Santa Clara County. Right. Because I don't, for a long time, I don't think that was really happening, you know, because everyone just assumed there weren't any here. I right. mean, I've heard that so many times. Oh, right. really? There's Native people in Santa Clara County? Right. It is yeah. something special. It's very special. It is. And um, I don't think people realize that it could be lost just like that. You know, the cost of living gentrification of our people is a crisis today for us. And that's why it's important. Uh, you know, it's a priority for me that recognition is, you know, number one top priority to make happen and the land base, you know, mm -hmm. so that we can create a native village for our people to live on. That's right. And, you know, just like so many of the other tribes who have very few people that speak their languages or the, the few elders that still speak the languages have been dying off mm -hmm. because they weren't allowed to speak the languages because of the boarding schools. Right. So it's it's so important to retain or regain the language in your case and have mm -hmm. the, the kids learn it so right. they can pass it on. They're very eager to learn the language and, and it was very, we were lucky, right? Um, because the Spanish, one thing that they did very well 
is journal everything. And right. you know, we had J.P. Harrington, um, a you know, white anthropologist, linguist that traveled throughout California recording different members of tribes speaking the language and what they did on the land, managing the land. And so he recorded all that. And he recorded our people speaking their language, you know, um, different parts of ceremony, what they did with plants. Okay. So that's where we get our information from, and that's how we're able to uh, bring it back. Wow, ah, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. So we're here with Charlene, who's a chairwoman of the Moetma Ohlone Tribe of the San Francisco Bay Area, and she needs your help. Tell them how they can help you. <laughs> Please call your representative. Please call. Eric Swalwell, Ro Khanna, Representative Zolofgren, on an issue, especially Zolofgren, Zo and let them know that you stand with us. You stand with our efforts to restore our status, our federal recognition status, that we still exist today, and, and that you support our efforts in you know, economic development, whatever that looks like for our people, and that you refuse to take rights away from the first peoples of these lands please write or call those representatives. Thank you. And as far as your work here in Santa Clara County, how can people help? I mean, I'm sure if someone wants to donate land. Oh, <laughs> or, that or would so be awesome. Or different ways, money, anything. Oh, yes. That they could help support the tribe move forward, right? Yes, uh, land would be awesome. You know, land is very important for us because we, we are, we are, our vision is a native village you know, a place to call, permanently call home so we're not continuing to be gentrified out. Um, a ceremonial place, you know, our own ceremonial place. You know, right now, relatives of ours are traveling outside our area for ceremony because we don't have our own. So land is very important. And if, you know, even a dollar towards that is something. Thank you for joining us, and I wish you a lot of luck on your adventures and, Thank you. and all your projects, and hopefully the community will come out and help yeah. in some way or another, because you can help. And thank you for joining us on Native Voice TV. We'll see you next week. Indigenous soul, indigenous soul. Indigenous soul. So